Okay. So we are going to create, um, for this video, we're going to create a geometry of our micro channel. And so I've already opened up ANSI's. Um, and we're going to start by doing a fluid flow, uh, fluid project. Fluid flow, fluent. Okay. Uh, first thing we need to do is create a geometry. So we're going to right click and do design modeler, not space claim, uh, but design modeler. So we're going to click that. And it's going to open up the design modeler um, window here in a moment. Okay. I'm just going to this up a little bit. For some reason, um, I don't know if it's something with the settings or what, but you could see like before when I would scroll or slide, it's like it maintains it. Um, it's not refreshing. So if you minimize and open back up, it, it, it works. I don't know if something with the graphics or what's going on. I'm using, um, my new laptop is using, um, a different graphic graphics card than I was using before. And also we're using the newer ANSI, so I don't know if that has to do with it, but in any case, we're going to create a sketch in the, uh, ZX plane. Uh, that's what we did before. So we're going to try to keep everything the same. And so I'm going to click. So we go normal to the plane and click that arrow there. Oh. And I'm going to go to sketching. Uh, first, actually, let's change the units to micrometers. I forgot that. This is very important, micrometers. Um, so we're in micrometers. OK, cool. So we're going to go to sketching and line. Now we're basically going to start creating lines. Um, I'm going to create this first line that passes through the origin. And you just click once to start the line, click again to end it. So I'm going to click. And you can see this little um, symbol that's below the line. So now it's not, now it is. If you click that, it's going to snap to be parallel with um, whatever line you're running next to. Okay. So we're going to create and snap it. Um, this is the, uh, mixing chamber. It's the first thing we created. Um, so right now we're just getting a rough overview of the design. So I'm going to make, this is the inlet for the one inlet for the other. And you see that little circle that just came up when you're doing that, you should know then that, um, you know, let me undo that to show again. So when I click here, this point, click once. And when I go up and this little arrow almost points up here, uh, the tip of this little pin symbol, you can see that because there's almost like a little half circle around it. See, now it's not, now it's there, now it's not, now it's there. And you can also see that little symbol, um, the little like, uh, looks like an A uh, on the Z axis. See there, and it's there now, now it's not, now it's there, now it's not. So you want both of those um, little things to come up and that lets you know that the line's parallel and it's basically going to intersect the line to the right. So, so then that way these lines will be matched up. Okay, so we're gonna close out the shape and we've made our basic um, overview of the shape. So next thing we want to do is set dimensions. So I'm going to click dimensions there. And first thing I'm going to do is a length distance uh, dimension. Okay. And I'm going to set that length distance between here, this line and the Z axis. And so what that's going to help me do is um, ensure that everything is symmetrical. So I'm going to click the line that line and it, as you can see, it just came up with these dimension arrows. So I'm going to click that. Um, and then now I'm going to go to general. So switch back to general. This is going to give general dimension. So every line you click, 
click once, click again, click, click. It's going to bring up a, a dimension. Now, this warning came up. New dimension makes model over constrained. Use cancel or undo to restore. This comes up because if you click OK, it's going to over define the line because, because we already have the symmetry and we have this one. There's no need to have two um, dimensions that you're selecting because when you select this one and you select this one, it's going to automatically make this line the same length as this one. So I'm going to click undo so that we get rid of that error. Um, go back, we're on dimensions, and I'm going to click this one, set it, this one, set it. And now I don't have to click this one because it'll overdefine it. But you can just do it just to be sure. Click OK, and you can just undo if you're not sure. So now it seems that we got all of our uh, dimension uh, things to define. Okay. So as you can see here, we have all our dimensions, and we're going to set them. So H3, uh, let me check my notes here. Um, H3 was 1,600 micrometers. And now that's basically the distance from here to here, the mixing channel, if you will. So I'm just going to click here, H3. I'm going to click on that value. Oops. And I'm just going to type in 1600. Hit Enter. And it's going to make that dimension longer. Um, I guess what I'll need to do is I forgot this dimension too. So you can either do this dimension or this dimension. And so let me just do this one. And H9, we're going to make that 1600. Hit enter. So that way it makes it even. And then now I'm going to go over here and pan. Where is it? Here. I'm going to pan over. Just click and drag. Let me zoom out. Pan and drag. And we'll zoom back in. OK. Now, actually. What I should have done was selected this dimension here, which is our width of our channel. So that is, you can see there, I have it set as V2. So I'm going to go to V2. And I believe the thickness was... Um, I believe it was 50 micrometers wide, if I'm not mistaken. Let's try to see how it looks. Um, yeah, I think so. And then L1, since that's a symmetry, we're going to make this 25. And you can see then it's pretty much completed out, recognizing that from this point in the center to here is 25 micrometers, and that the channel width is 50. I can go back and change those later if we determined, if we determine that they are um, inaccurate from looking. Which, looking at us now, I think it's good. I I, I don't think it was wider than that. Because I'm looking I'm looking here at my notes. Basically, I have dimensions. I took a screenshot. But I'm just trying to match up which is which. Okay. So. The next thing that we're going to do is. Set. Uh, let me check something. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to check on um wanted to check on the dimensions. So uh I did that. Okay. Going to go back here. 
and zoom out, scroll over, and back in. Okay, so this dimension here, so H7, I'm going to go back, sketch, so H7 was 50 micrometers wide, and Oops, let me undo that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's make this H4 is 250 because that is let's see. I have to go back because I think this length V6 is 125 and then H7 was 50 there we go that's starting to look more like it and actually I think I can delete this dimension here because this is actually 250. So I'm going to delete this relation because this is 125. This is 50. I think this was 250. Yeah, so let me go to dimension not sketching. And then I'm going to add a dimension here. And then this is H10 is 250. Okay. Yeah, because this was 250 and this was 125. And I believe this is just going back for the dimensions. Now, the dimensions aren't that. Um, they don't have to be that specific for this. I think the important thing when we're making our other geometries is that just from here onward is 1,600 micrometers. And then, for example, if we're doing a T geometry, you're going to want, you would basically obviously select draw a line like this. And then the dimension from here to here would be the same as the dimension from here to there. Okay. So I believe we're done with defining all the dimensions. And we're going to generate. Okay. And then go back to the model. This is our sketch. Whoops. Hold on. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we want to add um, an extrusion, right? Because this is obviously the mid-plane. We want to make it 3D. Um, so what we're going to do is add a um, extrusion. And I think we do that by yeah, clicking extrude. And you can see here that we've already... Um, let me pan. So I've already created somewhat of an extrusion that you can see, but we want it to be even because remember we want this Z axis to be right in the middle of the channel. So what we're going to do is um, for the geometry, we're going to click the sketch, click apply, and that's basically applied sketch one as the shape we're extruding. 
we're adding material direction vector we want to, oh no, I'm sorry, uh, direction we want to be uh, both, symmetrical. So we want a symmetrical uh, direction, which means it's going to go up and down, fixed. And then the depth that we're doing, let me see, I believe the thing was 33 millimeters high, the channel. So we should do half of that, which is, uh, what is that, 16.5. So we're going to make this 16.5. Oops. And then, um, I believe, let me just verify. It should be good. I think we're good. So then generate. All right, yep. So it added it. So I believe that's it for the geometry, uh, creating the, the, the geometry. Um, the next video that I make is going to be doing the mesh um, and also naming the selections. So we have to name the inlet, the, the inlets, the outlet, and um, the wall surface. Okay, so that's it. And then don't forget to save the, the project, which I saved it before I took a little break to check something. Uh, so I'm going to save it. And make sure I save it. And then that's it. Thanks, guys.